Hello dear friends, welcome again to my YouTube channel, Geotechnical Engineering Consultancy Tips. Today I will be telling you all about pile integrity testing by PIT method, which is a non-destructive integrity test method for foundation piles and it is a low strain test method as it requires the impact of only a small handheld MR to evaluate pile integrity and or pile length for its quality assurance. And this is done by two methods, either as per pulse echo, sonic echo or time domain analysis method or as per transient response frequency domain analysis procedure. Now, describing about the test method, it is actually a low strain integrity testing done on concrete piles, drill shafts, auger cast piles, concrete filled pipe piles and even on timber piles. The test requires the impact of a small handheld MR using a motion transducer that is an accelerometer coupled on the shaft top pile head and the measurement of the shaft top motion. Either acceleration or velocity is recorded. The hammer strike blows generate input compressive stress wave from the hammer which is reflected from pile 2 and returns to the pile top at a time related to the speed of the travel of the wave depending, depending upon the grade of concrete used in the pile as a pile material. Test equipment. Now, the test is usually performed using digital data acquisition equipment. The signal conditioning and power supply of the said equipment must be of very high quality since the reflected signals for long piles and or piles in high friction soils are often very weak. Data should be stored in such a way that additional processing of further wave analysis is possible on the recorded accumulated data. The data must be displayed in a way such that the evaluation of preliminary field data and its interpretation can be easily done. Test personnel. The field testing should be performed by an experienced and trained person having experience in integrity testing. The interpretation of the records, however, requires extensive experience of at least a trained graduate civil engineer in this very field with sufficient experience in integrity testing. In one of my future lectures, I would be explaining you with figures the two methods also as well of this pile integrity test. Test preparation. Integrity testing is not to be performed until the concrete has cured for a minimum of 7 days unless otherwise approved by the engineer in charge concern. The pile head shall be free from water, dirt or any other debris at the time of testing so that real time data and real results could be obtained by handheld hammer when pushed against the pile and the recordings noted with the equipment. The concrete at the pile top surface must be relatively smooth with sufficient space for both attachment of the motion sensing device and hammer impact area. Now as regards the number of piles to be tested, we can test 20%, 50%, 75%, or maybe even 100% of the piles constructed at the site for integrity purpose. The piles designated for integrity testing shall be specified by the engineer in charge either after or prior to pile installation. If less than 100% of, of piles are initially tested, additional piles may be selected for testing at the discretion of the engineer in charge concerned and or as per prevailing circumstances, either during or after pile installation, in case piles integrity is found to be suspect or if the initial tests reveal any major difference. That is, the actual number of piles to be tested depends upon the actual site conditions. Result presentation. The engineer must be able to present the test report within the stipulated working days after performing the field test to provide the final test results with integrity evaluation report. For each pile tested, the output of PIT is a graph of the velocity signal versus pile length whose record shall be included in the report with a table summarizing results and conclusions. Additional plots and analysis can be included as required or suggested by the engineer in charge concern. Now, in last slide of mine, I was discussing with K how this test graph is generated in the equipment, PIT test equipment. The output of PIT is a graph of velocity signal versus pile length as shown. On the x-axis, the pile length is being shown and on the y-axis, it's the 
signals obtained by a little push of the hand held hammer on the concrete top surface this key where these waves are generated and they go to the two and come back at the pile shaft top and this the, and then this graph is generated so a good graph and a bad graph is being shown here how piles with flawless shafts show a reflection from the pile to as in the auger cast in place pile example as shown here as good the top of the figure defective piles show early reflections from the damage how you would be seeing ki the before reaching the pile depth of 35 meter which was the terminating pile the signals started generating which suggest that the bottom portion of the figure that there may exist some damage at the bottom portion of this pile from 25 meter to 35 meter and hence this pile has been termed as bad as a thumb rule two reflections are observed with embedment depth less than 30 times the pile diameter now what does pit do pile integrity test in a pile detects potentially dangerous defects such as major cracks necking bulging soil inclusions or voids discontinuity of concrete and in some situations can even determine unknown lengths of piles that support existing buildings bridges towers or any other structures now this pile integrity test has a few limitations that is because of it being low strain test method it is suggested that pit pile integrity test results cannot be used as the sole means of rejecting or accepting a shaft or pile tested <laughs> so what need to be done summary and recommendations of pile integrity test report pit is a quick and inexpensive method of testing the pile that is it is cheap and very easy to handle because of the portable set which we can go to the site and use for checking the pile integrity test and it's a very lightweight it is known as a limited pile integrity test its results include pile length material wave speed and either one major defect or a few flaws results are subject to accuracy limitations and have to be seen in conjunction with construction records and test results on several piles at one single site <laughs> therefore careful test execution and experience in data interpretation is very important however in complex situations a peer review can be sought now acceptance and rejection of pile integrity test results on which factors it depends shafts and piles with no significant reflections from locations above the pile to and with a clear pile to reflection may be accepted whereas if no clear to reflection is apparent the experienced test engineer shall state to which shaft depth the test appears to be conclusive that is where reflections from locations with significant reductions above the pile to are observed the pile is said to have a serious defect and all this comes with practice the engineer in charge concerned the as long as he does that number of tests and his experience gains he would be able to better interpret these test results generated by this pit software if the record is complex the results may be deemed inconclusive construction records that is concrete usage grout pressure records soil borings etc may also be treated as very valuable assets in result interpretations based on data recorded that is the test data generated from the site using this pile integrity test method the decision to reject and replace or repair any defective shaft pile is at the sole responsibility of the engineer in charge concerned for the said foundation in consensus with the client and contractor for for the corrective actions to be taken if any now remedial actions suggested for failed rejected or questionable piles rejected or questionable piles may be replaced questionable piles may also be subjected to further testing for example static load testing dynamic load testing core drilling ultrasonic logging etc but all these decisions has to be taken in connivance with the engineer in charge concerned in the of the site the engineer who has done the these tests the client and the contractor so that a cumulative joint consensus can be obtained on how to go about for the future progress of 
the very project where these pile integrity tests have been done. Remedial actions may include pressure grouting through core walls. If the pile top appears questionable, further pile top cutoff and retesting is advisable. If a majority of piles are diagnosed as inconclusive, partial or even complete pile excavation or some other test method is necessarily required to be done for pile acceptance. So, dear friends, hope you would have loved this video of mine. Keep on subscribing to my YouTube channel, Geotechnical Engineering Consultancy Tips. Thank you. Thank you very much.